well, to Robin, how's it playing? Yeah, Robin is bringing the Ability Zard deck, very similar to what we saw earlier on stream with Nico. Um, he's sticking with that, you know, all supporter based build. And it looks like we're going to be seeing a non GX Cephalon oh, Pidgeotto hello. archetype. This is one that has been in and around the top tables here and there. I've seen one or two people still going far in the tournament with it, and it looks like this is one of the highest placing um, Pidgeotto Blacephalon decks. And this is an archetype, archetype that I sort of low key had on my radar for this tournament. I really do think it has a lot of good matchups at its disposal. So Robin has his work cut out for him here. Yeah, very much so. We were even saying at the beginning of the day how you know the the single prize uh, Blacephalon is one of like the few single prize attacking threats that can actually really stand up to these big bulky tag team Pokemon and clearly Hapriel has been able to pilot it to great success so far. I mean, he's sitting with a day two guarantee and potentially, you know, gonna, with another win here, could put himself in amazing uh, talk contention for top eight. Yeah, absolutely. And he gets to go first in here. He, uh, it looks like he's also got himself a fiery flint to kick things off, throwing two fire energies away, helping him thin the deck to get rid of four more straight into his hand. This archetype works all around fire energies. Yes. It's very simple. You're going to try and get a bunch into play, a bunch in your hand, and use that for your damage output. Yeah, exactly. Fireball Circus for free fire energy doing 50 damage times the number of fire energy you discard from your hand. So kind of it's similar-ish to you know the plus on GX, except that it costs one extra energy and you're discarding from hand instead of sending stuff on the field to the lost zone. Oh, but no. Oh. This is really, really, really bad for him. He could actually be facing down a turn one knockout from Robin. Oh, um, that's horrendous. Welder's on the table. Your little 120 hit point Blacephalon is not safe at all. It looked like he had a great start with opening with the flint, but that was all he had. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not ideal in the slightest. And it is not going to be hard for Robin to find a KO here. He could do it with a Heatran. He could do it with a Reshiram and Charizard. Because yeah. the Heatran does 130, of course. And exactly. The Reshiram and Charizard's GX attack does 200. So Robin's even started off with a Jirachi as well. So he's got some good push potential here to try and make that happen. Yeah. Well, haven't really got uh, an eye of his hand just yet. So no. we don't know how close he is. I think I saw a Pokemon communication, so at the very least he's got Dedenne GX access. Yeah, so he's got um, he's got one Fire Energy hand as well, so he can you know, put that down mm -hmm. onto the Heatran just to get the, the one the one manual attachment, and then all he'll need from there is you know two more Fire Energies and a Welder and a way to switch, and he wins the game. We see Bench attach. We also see a Giant Hearth oh, come into play. That's and good. It's going to be a Dedenne change, throwing away two Fire Energies. We're looking for Welder and a switching card to yep. close out game one here in rapid fashion. There's the Welder. There's also a Flint. He can also giant half, so he's thinning as much as possible, yeah. uh, so that the welder gives him better draws as well as the stellar wish here. Yeah, he's almost there. Oh, he has a switch. Oh, that's it. Oh, it's already all there. <laughs> Fantastic. Good grief! Robin <laughs> takes an immensely quick game one, and we're going straight into game two. Well, that feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Raphael, it does. Uh, his draw engine is very much based on the Professor Realm's lecture, similar to actually the Pidgeotto controlling archetype. A lot yeah. of the time, you're trying to use your own stellar wish Jirachis to help you get there, and unfortunately. He just didn't have those outs early on, missing all his poker gears, missing um, all of the physical supporter outs, missing uh, Jirachi, missing you know Ultra Space. All sorts of things were missed there in unlikely fashion. But Robin's archetype being so aggressive was able to capitalize on that to the fullest extent. Yeah, it is. It is as you might say a big oof from. Uh, oh, it's all. It's so savage. Yeah, I mean. so from the from Hapel's <laughs> side. But uh, at, at the very least, the, the one silver lining he can take away is okay. Game one finished very very quickly. So yeah, we have plenty of time to finish out game two and three. If I might, I can set the way you would like to, I know that you know have a very good chance at actually you know, trading favorably in the prizes and winning this matchup. So that's what Rafael has to bear in mind going into game two and three. You've just got to take it on the chin. Uh, you get to go first again. You know that you can't get that unlucky again. Uh, fingers well, crossed. Well, I mean, you can, <laughs> but <laughs> you, you'd hope not. <laughs> and uh, you've also had a little bit of knowledge about uh, Robin's deck as well. Yeah. Uh, you get to see that he's at least playing some GXs. Uh, you, you know that he's more than likely going to be something like an Ability Zard based archetype. Uh, because Heatran GX only really features in maybe Blacephalon GX decks or um, the Ability Zard, as yeah. well as uh, a Mirror Match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah very much so. Uh, so, so yeah. Prizes for Robin. Uh, two switches could be a little bit annoying. Mega Low Punny and Jigglypuff does not matter in the slightest. <laughs> he'll, he'll be very content to prize that. Uh, meanwhile, from uh, Hapel's side, uh, Heatran, one great catcher, Fire Energy. It, again, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's, like it's not the absolute worst. Yeah. I think... Uh, as long as he gets a decent start in this game, he's just going to take that. Yeah, so. Starting uh, off with a Pidgey by the looks of things. Yeah, and, and another one, and a Blacephalon, so. Okay, it won't already be as quick as last oh. time, but I don't think he's got a supporter either. No, he's got literally no draw cards. No, not again. Uh. He's got himself that faithful fiery flint <laughs> that can help thin a bunch of these fire energies. <laughs> yeah. um, but it really is, at the moment, no 
no means of finding no. Elm, which is really awkward. I don't even think he has a Pidgeotto for next turn. No, he doesn't. He's got he's got he's got fiery flint. It's uh, flint flint. He's just got to get rid of every bad draw. Yeah, here. just a bunch of. I think his hand is now just basically going to be fire energy and fire crystals. Yes, it is. He is just saying that I don't want to draw any of these cards. Yep. Get them into my hand as quickly as possible. Yep. And nothing else. That is that is really it. Get me four fires. Yeah, one, two. I'm just gonna have to attach for turn to my Blacephalon and pass probably. You could even pay retreat on your Pidgey if you want to and protect um, your your Pidgeys because I mean yeah. the only way you get back into this game is if you can draw cards. Yeah, exactly. So, so airmail is going to be vital here. Of course, the, the airmail ability allowing you to just look at the top two cards of your deck and uh, then pick one of them, the cards you find, put it into your hand, and then uh, put the other one on the bottom of the deck. Just a really great draw engine that we've seen using the Pidgeotto control and in this deck. Well, we see a pass over to Robin again. I think <laughs> Robin as well must be pretty happy with how that turn one went. I mean, uh, no supporter from Raphael. Normally, you'd expect the Elm like immediately. Yeah, exactly. Even if you're just getting like one extra Pidgey down and grabbing some Pidgeotos for the following turn. So, again, he might be uh, sniffing out the fact that Raphael hasn't drawn fantastically well, and he's going to try and take the tempo as quickly as possible because I think that's Robin's only win condition. Yeah. You just got to try and uh, tempo out on those initial turns, knowing that yes, your opponent can get up trades and prizes, but if you just race quickly enough, yeah, um, it's not going to be too much of an issue. Yeah, and Raphael has done absolutely the right thing here. He's you done made the best of a of a bad situation again. The only thing that you could maybe consider is, like you said, retreating the Pidgey just to protect it. But I think other than that, he's done the best he can to thin out his deck out of all the bad draws. Yeah, he thinned eight energies yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully <laughs> <laughs> he only has decent draws from now on. Now, that's not strictly true. There are no. a handful of cards that aren't going to help him. But yeah. um, hopefully he's done all he can to get himself into good shape here. And he's got a number of decent outs here as well. He finds a Welder. That's great. You can then just draw some more cards from there. If he finds like, a Pidgeotto, that's great too. He's He has, has got Yeah, he's means. by no means out of it. No. We're going to see the Cherish Ball from Robin going for that um, early Heatran. We also see a, a Skateboard from him. That's one of the pieces to get that Heatran into the active and swinging early. We also yep. see a Pokemon Communication here, uh, putting his Turtonator back into the deck. Yep. It's very much like an old school style of Abilities Art in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think very really much. the only real changes are the addition of Megalopony and Jigglypuff and the Zeb Striker that comes into the list. Yeah, and uh, of course he was able to find that skateboard off of the Stellar Wish, so it, that, that's really nice for him because now having found this second Jirachi off of the Pokemon Communication, you can just attach your skateboard and go for the Stellar Wish again. Like we see so often, you know, in the early turns, it's really handy it's to just switch oh, already as well. Even so better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he can do this all before the Dede change by the looks of things. Yeah, yeah his hand is amazing. <laughs> that, that, it's a little bit busted. <laughs> right now, Robin not missing a beat here. Six fresh cards. Can he find himself again? That Welder. He's found a bunch of Fire Energy, oh. so it's a big Stellar Wish now. Yeah, that, that is not a great hand at all. So Both players have almost identical hands <laughs> at this point. <laughs> just fire energies. Yeah. Oh, but he does find a giant half and a cherish roll of the Stellar Wish, so he can get himself a the uh, for next turn, for example. Yeah, it's one for next turn. It's not quite the tempo that he took in that first game. No, not at all. Um, but he's still got to be feeling okay. But this does open up the door for Raphael to have a little, b little bit of breathing space, at least. Yeah, very much so. It's not going to be like you know the first turn KO where on the mm -hmm. Pidgey that could have perhaps happened otherwise. Absolutely. Now. So Robin just shuffling up. He'll probably just hold the Cherish Ball, I would imagine, yeah. and just send it over um, to Raphael. Because he can, he can decide what to get off of it based on what he uh, draws on the next exactly. turn. Exactly, yeah. So it looks like there's not many other actions going on here. No, he I may be baiting. Benching um, the Victini, I imagine. Or retreating as well. Yeah, he can just retreat. He has the other escape board in hand. Yep. So this just means that he can protect the guaranteed escape board. Oh, Ooh, it's a big draw for him. Heat battery, that is ideal. We can use that to discard, to discard the fire engine and draw three more cards. We're totally back in this game as long as these three cards get us towards supporters or more draw. Uh, well, that's not those. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, he's got a skateboard, so you can use that to attach to the Pidgey, attach an extra energy to the Blacephalon and go for the Blazer. So just to get some extra, uh, some initial damage onto the field. And if he flips over a fire engine, you can actually take a knockout on the Jirachi as well. Do you go for that player though? Do you think? No. I think the biggest thing is you're against ability Zard, and the one thing you know is that they are using Nine Tails to gust. Yes. So as soon as you haven't seen a Volpix, you know that this Blacephalon can just chill in the back. He's holding on to at least one Fire Crystal, <laughs> maybe even two. So if you can just slow attach, it really puts Robin off from just going early game uh, heat run. Yeah, very much so. That's a very good point. As uh, Robin uh, goes over to his turn, he uses the Heat Factory himself to discard a Fire Engine, draw three. Finds himself a Dedene off of that, so that's pretty good. It means he can use the Cherish Ball to get something else that isn't Dedene, but at the same time, that doesn't look really like the kind of hand he wanted Dedene away. Yeah, his board state is going to end up looking really weird. He'll have to put down the Victini Prism Star um, and then 
go for a Deadly Change if that's what he wants to do. He could also just use this Cherishable now and hope that the Stellar Wish bails him out and works toward a Weld. That's also the, something that's available. So Cherishable for the Reshiram and Charizard GX is what he's going to find. And I don't, I mean, his hand aside from that is not that amazing. Yeah, if he finds a welder off of a, a stellar wish, that might make it really good. I imagine he's going to wish first, yeah, yeah. before the just like committing to a Dedene, because especially when you have your pal pad, you'd really love to get some value out of that before yeah. throwing it away. Yeah, exactly. And you you really want to. There it is. Oh, yeah, that's that's a pretty good find. It, it is um, it is interesting how sometimes you know you have the decision wh over whether you want to you know Dedene change first, uh, either before or after mm -hmm. stellar wish, and uh, it, it really just depends on the, the current situation you're in. Yeah. In Robin's current situation, he really doesn't want to throw all that away if he can't help it. So it absolutely makes sense to go for the stellar wish first. Yeah, and it wasn't only like the weld outs he could find. He could find any of his additional switches and go for a second bite of the cherry. Yeah. with his other um, Jirachi. So it definitely makes sense to go down this route and try and get some extra value out of the other cards currently in your hand rather yeah. than just throwing them all away. Absolutely. So there goes the Victini Prism onto the bench, weldering to it. Of course, uh, we've actually, th this, is this is really cool because Robin, he doesn't have that many Fire Energy in the discard, but it's still enough to KO the Pidgey, and then it just gets his Fire Energy resources back to do more, more yeah. welders and you know, discards and all that wonderful stuff that this deck does. Like we said, nothing. there's nothing Raphael loves more than just up-trading. Yes. That's his win condition here. So if Robin can try and weave in the Victini Prism Star and the Turtonator on these different turns, that's going to make the game much longer and more difficult for Raphael because he'll have to find all sorts of resources throughout the entire game. Yeah, and, and recognizing that Robin uses communication to put the rear Rashram and Charizard back into the deck, does not really want to bench that at all in this matchup because that would be way too favorable in upgrade and it looks like he's going to yeah, grab himself that Volpix instead. I think you have to here um, because you can't just let Raphael sit behind his Blacephalons. And I think also part of Robin's win condition is just trying to deplete the board of Pidgeotto. Yeah. Um, because he doesn't play Reset Stamp, I don't believe. And if he does, it would only be like a one-off copy because ability-based char uh, Charizard doesn't really have the space to commit towards that sort of card, yeah. um, especially because they are so Dedenne GX focused that they won't be able to get value out of it on the right turn a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, so I he has to just ruin the engine instead. Yeah, neither player's playing Reset Stamp yeah, in this game. Exactly. So that will not be a factor in this game at all. We see a manual attachment to the Heatran. Um, we're going to see the second escape board go onto the Jirachi. You're seeing that there's two Fire Energies in the discard pile right now. Oh, that's actually not enough then. Has Robin miscounted here? Maybe, yeah, because he, maybe he thought he had three, but no, two, two is not enough. Ooh, that's actually a big, big deal here. Yeah, that means no KO on the Pidgey, because of course it's got 50 HP. Ouch. <laughs> maybe what he's hoping for now then instead is that he's going to pass here make it so Raphael finds like one of his like two escape boards. The archetype really has a low amount of switching cards mm -hmm. and really make Raphael have a lot. Make him have energy, make him have a skateboard, all just to take a Jirachi knockout instead. Yeah. Okay, Robin's going a different route. He's saying, well, that wasn't enough for the Victini. Yeah. Let's just take the one prize with Heatran. And yeah. This is where the game opens up a lot. Yeah, exactly, because that is a two prize attacker that uh, Robin has put active. So now all it takes is a one fire energy. Oh, Professor Helm's lecture as well. It's a really huge draw. It's <laughs> amazing. So now Raphael can really get his uh, engine going. He can grab himself you know, two Pidgeotos and another Pidgey, really start to, you do one ML to, 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 to start to dig a little bit more. And I think he actually has enough energy in his hand for the KO already. I mean, he must do, right? He has so much from before. Yeah, with Fire Crystal, there's no way he's not being able to Fireball Circus here for a yeah. bunch of prizes. So, yeah, there it is. Um, as we predicted, uh, one Pidgey, two Pidgeotto. One of the Pidgeotos will come down straight away because, of course, that Pidgey has been down for a turn. And now the engine can start getting rolling. Yep, there's also even the option for Heat Factory. I'm not sure if he has quite that amount of surplus energies, but he could try and dig a little bit deeper. Yep. That's going to be what we see here. Yeah, one, two, three. Gr oh, Fire Crystal and uh, Ultra Space, all amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and not only that, but a Welder for next turn too. Yeah, exactly. It's a really, really great find. So now he can find himself a backup attacker as well. This is about an ideal turn as Rafael could ask for. So he'll be taking two prizes this turn. Um, Robin really sat in an awkward spot where... He'll be trying to get a knockout, hopefully, with a Victini Prism. And then, you know, he ha probably has to deal with the Blacephalons themselves. Maybe he can't even go for the Ninetales route much. Um, it really is a toss-up to see how he wants to do this, because Raphael's hand is already, like, pretty stacked. Um, there's so many cards in there. There'll be two more at the end of this turn after the prize cards. So does it even feel worth going for Pidgeotos at this point? Yeah, You've just got to try and attack the Blacephalons as they come now, right? Yeah, I think it, at this point it's just... Uh, you know, you are, in terms of attacking tempo, you are way too far behind. You know, these Blacephalons are going to put in a lot of hurt onto your field. Raphael's going to uptrade very favorably. And uh, yeah, now straight away with the Fireball Circus, 200 damage, that's the knockout. And uh, now Robin's really on the back foot. 
Yeah, it's a pretty awkward situation for him. Robin would have loved to have been able to use that Victini Prism Star uh, just to make this less of an issue right now. But at the same time, he can try and use this Victini. Like, he can weave it in any time to yeah. try and skew the prize trade if possible. But um, the door's really opened ra to Raphael now. He's got that initial hand advantage going, and Robin has no way to deny that. That's one of the biggest issues of the ability Charizard archetype um, is that you just don't have the disruption options available to you. No, you really don't. And, and like we were saying, although he can he can get a Ninetales here, maybe start to you know, KO that one Pidgeotto, but you know, Raphael's hand is so stacked with Fire Crystals <laughs> that... <laughs> he's already there. Yeah. yeah. He's already got his next like two prizes at least mapped out. And, and, and if you can find a great catcher, then uh, exactly. <laughs> the end game's pretty much as good as over. He just KOs the dead NA, and then you know, two more KOs will be all she wrote. Robin might be choosing to fail this uh, Stellar Wish. He is eventually going to opt to go for the Welder. I think he's eyeing up whether it's worth like weldering before Dead A Change or if he just commits to Dead A Change now. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, nothing that amazing to Welder to, especially because the Heatran's now gone, so it's not even a case of I can Welder to whatever and then yeah, yeah. put the Heatran to the active and use the uh, Burning Road ability to yeah. move the Fire Engines to that. Yeah, the only benefit is knowing that he'll probably want to weave in Turtonator at some point in the game. You just throw the energies anywhere for Turtonator to like steal for later. Yeah, and of course Turtonator being a, another single prize attacker will be yeah. very important for him to use at some point. And it looks like that is kind of the thought process that's going on through Robin's mind as he just does just go for the Welder, attach you two to the Vulpix. Yeah, you always want to pick Vulpix because Great Catcher is normally the card that you'll see uh, for the gusting effect for the, uh, the Cephalon Pidgeotto based deck. Um, so it's nice and safe there. And he's also eyed up a Pokemon communication now. And he can try and work towards maybe this Turtonator at this point. Yeah. This looks like that's actually just... Oh, no. It's going to go for the Nine Tails. Tails. Okay. Maybe that opens up... Maybe he is thinking that although there's a large hand from Raphael, there's still a lot that he needs to find. It's not only like one Fire Crystal, because it, it would have to be like Fire Crystal, also Welder, also Fire Crystal uh, to deal with like the Victini Prism. So maybe it is still worth attacking this Pidgeotto engine. We'll see what Robin wants to do. So, Ninetales, nine tails, uh, yeah, it gets found there. It, you will be able to, you will be able to evolve it up. It, 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 it is just a problem that we goes back to what we were saying before, though. That you know, going for the Pidgeotto here means that you're just not dealing with the actual attacking threat. There's so many instances where we've seen in previous games on streams where you know you try to you know, deal with the support Pokemon just to try and disrupt them, but then it just doesn't matter because the attackers are ready to go and all your threats are dealt with, and then you just end up losing the game. And that's pretty much the kind of how it's going to play out in what we're seeing here what into how who's going to end up winning this game because of it. Okay, so by the looks of things, uh, Robin was one energy short, so he actually was forced into going for the Dede change regardless. Okay. Um, so he's already done his manual attachment to the Victini Prism. Um, we're going to see him do one more switch for one more Stellar Wish before he brings in that Victini for a knockout here. And he does find himself off of that Stellar Stella Wish. Looks to be a Cherish Ball, a couple of other options. Does just go for the no, Giant Hearth? No, does go for the Communication instead. I think Giant Hearth is so awkward in this matchup, giving your opponent <laughs> that essentially a 300 damage each turn. Yeah, that, that's not ideal, is it? But even though it's your opponent's stadium, it's like better for it to be in play than your own stadium. Normally you expect you to play ones that are more synergistic with your own list. Yeah. But uh, here, Raphael can use uh, Giant Hearth to great effect as well. Yeah, so Victini Prism coming into the active instead. Uh, Robin doing a count to see how many energies are available to uh, to Raphael to maybe uh, get back with Fire Crystal. Uh, but in the meantime, I do believe there are enough energies in there now, yeah, to go for this uh, Infinity and uh, we'll be able to get the knockouts here. Robin just double, triple check in and he's going to take the first prize, trying to mount a comeback here. He's behind in the prize race. We know that there's already another Welder and a couple Fire Crystals in Raphael's hand. Uh, so it's going to be see, gonna be down to seeing if he can keep up this tempo for the rest of the game, because that's the only thing stopping him right now. Yeah. And the one thing that, of course, does play into Raphael's benefit is that Robert did have to bench another dead NAGX. So, you know, all, all it takes for Raphael will be to find a couple of great catchers and yeah. this game is over. In the ideal scenario, it's great catcher, great catcher. Uh, that's uh, the best way he can go about trying to win this game. Yeah. Second right. Pidgeotto hits the board. We can also see an Ultra Space here thinning and making sure he gets his next Lecephalon yeah. ready to go. That is the other thing as well, actually. Of course, uh, Giant Half, although it does, it make, it does make it more, you know, you know, easy, it does make it easier for Raphael to get fire engines of his own. The fact that you could also argue that getting a second, a third Lecephalon is more important. So, yeah. so but the fact that, uh, you know, Raphael has the guaranteed access to that now means that, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a, a, big, a big problem for Robin because as soon as this Lecephalon goes down, another one's ready. 
We're going to begin with some air mails. It's actually interesting that he opts to go for this before the welder because you can guarantee three cards into your hand straight away. Yeah. And it gives you more knowledge because you always know you're going to be going for welder this turn. I actually, in a sequencing sense, would have preferred to see the welder first. Um, but here we are. We're seeing a couple air mails first. Regardless, he's building up a giant hand. Very much. And as we have to keep saying, that Robin has no way to disrupt this hand. This hand is going nowhere. No, exactly. So, so Raphael, Raphael's hand is stacked and staying there. Yeah. These cards are cards to keep. Yeah. Again, we're seeing a, a poker gear here. Obviously looking for future welders if possible. Nothing wrong with thinning extra Professor Elms lectures as well. They're cards that you really want to do on turns one and two. Yeah, yeah. And from then on, you're just hoping to welder throughout the rest of the game. But, uh, but even so, thinning out the deck, meaning that you don't draw a rough welder, is absolutely fine. So now I imagine we will finally see the welder get played down. Yep. Welder, two fire energy onto the Blacephalon, three cards drawn. We've got four Blacephalon, that's not too bad <laughs> at all. And another welder for next turn. I'll do well, it. he's in good shape. Yeah. Raphael is sorted. <laughs> the this only point. thing we're missing is that great catcher. Yeah. I mean, he's forced himself into having to attack, you know, three times yeah. <laughs> to be able to win rather than just two turns. But, I mean, still fine, right, honestly. Like Overall, <laughs> as long as he's still got access to welders and still has enough energy and fuel to get through the game, shouldn't be too big of an issue. And, of course, Raphael also plays his own Victini Prism Star. That's something that you definitely can't forget because we're seeing him burn through a bunch of fire crystals and fire energies here. Yeah. Um, so as long as he keeps enough in the back for a Victini Prism, he's not going to struggle. Yeah, and there's going to be a very easy KO here as well. All you needed to discard two energy with the Fireball Circus to do uh, the 100 damage with the Victini, only having 90 HP, of course. He does opt to... Third Pidgey, that's yep. always nice. You get even more air mails. So dra drawing cards wins games. <laughs> it absolutely does, as we see him go down to three prize cards now. And uh, it's over to Robin to see if he can sort of stem this flow. Yeah. It really is almost out of his control uh, because uh, Raphael's draw engine is online at this point. Yeah. Um, He's ahead in the prize race. He's only going to put down non-GXs. So the only way Robin can um, slow him down is by continuing to use as many non-GXs as he can, extend the game for as long as possible so that there'll, there'll be a moment where Raphael misses. Yeah. Now, unfortunately for Raphael, he, did ha he wasn't able to fish out one of his two great catches in the prizes. It means that he is only playing two of them, so yeah. he's going to have to essentially really fish for it next turn. But he, uh, actually, no, he doesn't need to do, to do that because he can take just one yep. KO on a non-GX, and then as long as he finds one great catcher in the mm -hmm. next two turns, he's good to go. It shouldn't be a huge issue for him. Robin does now opt to replace that um, stadium. Of course, he's thrown all of his energies back into his deck, so he's got to start yeah. thinning those out for his own sake. Exactly, but I mean, uh, also at this point, it doesn't even matter because uh, Raphael's literally f fished out every single Pokemon that Absolutely. the Ultra Beast can first can <laughs> search. So the only Ultra Beast is playing Ardos plus Ephelon, so it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah, so probably the Giant Hearth will be staying in play for the rest of the game now because it benefits both players. <laughs> and uh, Robin does have the Turtonator option available to him. Um, I imagine the only path he has is like try and attack this Turtonator and then try and put up the big Reshiram and Charizard. Yeah, and it, it, it just hope that Raphael can't find great catches. Yeah, that's really his only route here. Yeah, it's got to be a way of thinking of. Maybe you know, hope that Raphael goes through so many energies and fire crystals that he doesn't just have the means to take the one shot. Exactly. And there are a good amounts of fires in the discard pile currently. There's also a couple or maybe even three fire crystals played. It's at least two. Yeah, it's definitely. I think, it is, I think it is two. I think the third one might be still sitting in his hand. Cool. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, after Stella Wish, Robin finds a Fiery Flint, which he considers getting. Yep, he will go for that. I really do like the inclusion of Fiery Flint to this list. It wasn't, it wasn't really a card that you saw much of um, in the build because Giant Hearth was just such a solid card. Um, but this is just awareness of the metagame and awareness that um, Chaotic Swell is such a big card that adapting the list is definitely an important factor here. Yeah, because, you know, what if your Giant Half doesn't stick or if you, if you can't make it stick exactly because of that Chaotic Swell, at least then you have, like, an extra out which is immune to that to just get a bunch of fire engines to make sure your welders go off smoothly. So we saw Robin shuffle about eight or so <laughs> energies into the deck <laughs> and pull six out this turn all in one go. It's pretty we good. We see three energy onto the Turtonator and he's just going to remove all three of those and take a knockout on another one of Raphael's Blacephalons here. Uh, something I, I neglected to mention at the start of the game, looking at Robin's list, he's playing 18 basic fire energy. Yep. It's the good old-fashioned theme deck build. Because, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I mean, I think when, obviously, Todd had his really high first success with the list, he was opted at 17, but Robin's like, you know what, man? Nah, 17's not enough. Let's add in one more, yeah. just in case. 18's that key number. Yeah. You're just going to make sure you've got enough to push through on tag teams. <laughs> just going all in on that Victini Prism Star, taking one hit KOs. It's just such a big swing in games. So, first of all, Raphael kicks off. He uses that giant hearth, throws away an elm that he doesn't need. He also bumps his own stadium and just goes for a quick ultra space, gets it out of the hand. I'm pretty sure 
he's confident that there aren't any reset stamps coming, but there's no reason to not play around it as much as possible. Oh, so no, of course. I think the only real thing we're kind of missing right now, there's even the Victini Prism in his hand. Oh, wow, so okay. He's not going to struggle in terms of resources to close out the game here. Uh, in fact, does he just go for this now? Yeah, I think he does. Yep, yep he does indeed. He's going to go grab himself three cards. He oh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's got welders for days now. He'll be putting a bunch of fire energies back into his deck. He's got three air mails. I think there's already the escape board in his hand. He just picks up a fire crystal. He's got it all. If you want a textbook example of the power of this deck, look no further. <laughs> like, this is exactly what, what this deck can do when it's at full power and operating on all cylinders. And it is scary, honestly. This was after a supporterless turn one <laughs> as well. <laughs> Let's not forget. It was really rough. Yeah. We are now in that sort of mode where he's got triple air mail available to him. He's just picked up a Jirachi as well from that airmail, giving himself even more draw options, just making sure that he can't um, slow down at any point in the game from yeah. this point on. It is also interesting because, of course, when uh, this Blacephalon first came out, a lot of people, some people were hyped on it. I remember you, you, you yourself, you were mm -hmm. sort of rated against one of the, high, one of the highest rated cards in this set, but then it kind of fell off the radar a little bit until it seems like this year Pidgeotto engine picked up and realized, yeah. okay, this is how we actually make this deck go consistent throughout the course of a longer game. We can't just rely on welders, yeah. but you know, having this you know, non-GX you know, consistency engine in Pidgeotto just really it just you know, took it off to like new levels. Yeah, it had like a surprise breakout performance making a top eight in the NEIC yeah. um, with that green space build. And then from then on, we've seen Pidgeotto sort of take over uh, and become the more popular variant. And you can see why. Um, just having this fullback can really put you ahead in the prize race and then just make sure yeah. that you can't ever fall behind afterwards. Very much. Okay, very clever play here from Raphael. Before going for the Infinity, he preemptively plays the Fire Crystal just to make sure that he's got energy in hand to weld the next turn on the Cephalon. I like this a lot. Yep, definitely uh, run through the numbers. Make sure that you can get the full value out of your Fire Crystal and yep. then there's no reason to flood your deck with excess energy cards, which yeah. although they're really helpful for you, you that yeah. They're one of those cards that they do the least for you a lot yeah, of the time. Exactly. Uh, all these other cards can help you dig, and you may as well fire off the crystal early, knowing that you're basically just going to be airmailing into nothing but fires from now on. Yeah, exactly. And just to make yeah, absolutely guarantee that you do you know, have enough uh, fire energy to you know, do, do the well the next turn, and then just build up the extra ones you need to take the win with, oh, Raphael just picked up his great catcher from the prizes as well. Yeah, I think he's pretty much locked in at this point. Yeah. With, um, with no reset stamp in sight as well. Yeah, there's currently only two fire energies in his hand, so it would be a case of having to welder plus airmail a bunch of times to find four total energy cards. Yeah, I, 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 that should be pretty It should easy. be fine. We've yeah. seen how many he's just shuffled back in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we see Robin. He's doing the game plan that he set out earlier. This is as much as he can do. He's yeah. got to try and make it difficult for Raphael. 300 is, well, 270 is the most hit points Robin can put in the active position. Yeah. So this is the route he's got to go for. Make it as difficult as possible, but he's still, you know, at best three attacks away from game, and Raphael is staring down, you know, one attack yeah. from game. Yeah, it's like, unfortunately for, for Robin, great catcher just makes this line of play not as effective as he would like. Right, yeah. The only real hope is that Raphael has gone through so many fire crystals that finding all of those physical fires is the challenge. Yeah. But I can't see it being hugely difficult. No. We could be seeing the Ninetales bring up the... Blacephalon on the bench. Yeah, that's what we're going to see here. Yeah. And it and forces an extra Pokemon. It forces... Also, we've seen... Uh, well, Robin has seen the Ultra Space miss. Yes. So it tells him that there's a chance that there aren't any other non-GX Blacephalons in the deck as y well. Yeah, it might be the last one's prize, for example. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but Robin <laughs> can't play on that subject. You've got to try it. You've got to play two outs, as we always say. You know, Even if it's a very small chance, you've got to it. will force an extra Fire Energy, at the very least. Yeah, Now exactly. it means that uh, we've got to see five Fire Energies out of Raphael. Uh oh, sorry, even more than five. He's got to find way more. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to find um, four from hand and three on the board. Yeah. yeah. So there's Welder attaching the two, of course. Three cards drawn. And he's got it. <laughs> so that's a lot of fires. <laughs> that will definitely be it. Is enough. that enough to close the game? But you, could he has to manually attach one. I think there's 150 in his hand right now. But we need just a great catcher, right? Well, okay, no, yeah, he needs one, one more. away, right? So yeah. he has three air mails to try and get one more energy. Yeah, and he's going to be, he's going to do this. Uh, well, I say he's going to do this sensibly. He's got the great catcher, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's just uh, one part of it. Now, yeah, just as long as he, oh, he's got a fire crystal in hand. Oh, has he? Yeah. Well. There it is. <laughs> yep. yep. That's his last fire crystal. Gets him easily enough yep. to get over the line on Dedene. Yep. And he's able to take it to one all right now with a healthy 20 minutes on the clock to close out game three even. Yeah, wow. What an impressive performance for the, for the Cephalon deck there. Showing what it can really do when it's, again, firing on all cylinders. It's, it's, it's an immensely <laughs> powerful archetype when it gets going. We've seen the highs and the lows. We've yeah. seen a, a draw pass, and uh, we've seen a draw pass, but then draw and be good again. <laughs> so, um, 
you know, anything could happen in this final game. We've seen um, it can have some rough openings, but as soon as those Pidgeotos come into play, the damage output is just phenomenal. Yeah, it really is. And uh, again, like you said, it, in this matchup especially, it just means you're, it, you're so favored because even though Robin, he's not playing a massive GX engine. Abilities are just not one of these you know, decks that right. puts out like a billion tag team Pokemon and then you know just tries to overwhelm your opponent with that. You, you're normally playing you know maybe one or two restaurant Charizard, or maybe a Heatran, a couple of Dedenes, but even then that's still up trading. It's still down trading compared to what the Blacephalon deck can do because you know. L um, yeah, they're, they're a Puritan non-GX. Yeah, they, like they literally have nothing other than non-GXs apart from the one Heatran yeah. that they use that is normally like a finisher. Most yeah, of the exactly. Time. So. Yeah, you can definitely see why it gets away with trying to have a few uh, sort of slower turns as you build up that board, get yourself to a point where you can't lose. And Raphael didn't even see anything like a reset stamp um, from Robin either, so he's got to be feeling good about this game three. Yeah, pretty much anything you're kind of like scared of, I guess, if you're um, if you're Les Les is. You know, say if you get down a free Pidgeotto against um, against Mewtwo and they can do a you know, cross right. division of 200, that's obviously that, that's the one way that a tag team deck can sort of you know trade favorably. But even then, you know the Blastoise can do so much damage that it just doesn't matter. Yeah, I really like the metagame call. I think uh, Raphael made the shout uh, the shout that um, Malamar wasn't going to be hugely popular, yeah. and if I do face Mewtwo's, you just got to kind of take it on the chin. And even then, the Mewtwo player has to find a lot of energies and a lot of welders fast. Yeah, it does. So it forces the best hands out of Mewtwo players and you hope that Malamar's not popular enough. Yeah, very and, much um, so. it's worked out really well for him today. Yeah. Um, so as we start off game three, one thing worth mentioning uh, in terms of the prizes is that Raphael has prized one of his Blacephalons. So mm -hmm. yeah, not ideal, it's, it's not the end of the world, but it's kind of, you know, when that's your only attack, you really don't want to prize any of them, uh, ideally. Robin opens with Welder to his active Turtonator. He's got himself Pokemon Communication, he's got himself Dedenne. He's also got himself a backup Welder and a bunch of energies in hand. So he may just want to communication something like a Jirachi and just not even go for Dede change here. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, oh, he actually just goes for Vulpix. Okay, maybe not. Then maybe he does just want to go for the, the, the Dede straight away. He'll also get to scout through his deck. As long as his uh, pal pads around, he may feel kind of okay going for a Dede change play. Also, uh, it's, it's unlikely that Raphael can take a knockout on turn one. Yeah, that's true. Um, they oftentimes have to go for Professor Elm's lecture to get rolling first, but it's not out of Raphael's range. No, not at all. So he may have to play a little on the safe side. It's going to be interesting to see how Robin tries to play this turn. He could try and just say, it's unlikely that my opponent will take a knockout here, so I'll hold this welder uh, and hope for the best. Or he'll have a more conservative route. It's going to be interesting to see which one he picks, because there's definitely arguments on both sides here. Yeah, there really is. As we see that, the communication being played to grab the Volpix, of course, you know, nine tails. If you can you know, get up early enough and just pick off those uh, Pidgeys can be a great way to disrupt the setup. In the last game, it was, it was too little too late to do that, but I imagine that what's, that's what Robin is considering here as he... As he plays around with fire energy, maybe debating I where think to attach it. The fact that he picked the Vulpix means he's probably just going to be passing here because he's got that nine tails that he's cl uh, clutching onto in hand. So I like this. It's yeah. a really calculated risk. It's good knowledge of the deck that he's up against. And we see a Welder for one, so he can already breathe a sigh of relief that he's not going to have his Turtonator knocked out in one hit. And it's a big card for Raphael here. Yeah, he, he finds an another Welder. He has an Elms for next turn, but does he have any other Pokemon? We're just seeing Pidgeotto. Oh no! It's happened again. I don't no, believe this. Oh no! It's just going to be a blazer. That, that's it. The Robin game's shows over. Him an energy. I don't wow. believe this. Oh, it's Raphael. So, oh, it's so harsh to see that. We got to see, you know, how great it can be, and also we see the ugly side of the archetype. That really is rough. It's happening two times in a row. Well, not in a row, but you know, in a series yeah. is really unfortunate and. Not all that likely. He does play a lot of outs. Yeah. He's got himself Poker Gears. He's got himself Elms. He's got himself Jirachi. He's got himself yeah. a bunch of Pidgeys. He's got himself Ultra Space. I can list, you know, he's got like 20 plus outs of cards that can put yeah. him in good shape to just not lose instantly. And uh, yeah, it's a big miss. Yeah, well, that's a real, it's a real shame. Huge, huge commiserations to Rafael piloting, you know, a, a, 